Hey, this is Gay Poke Payton. I'm coming to you with blog number eight, and this blog is going to be entitled Pump Your Brakes. Ladies, you have to know when it's time to pump your brakes. I know that when you are trying to show yourself as submissive to a man and you're following his lead and you're doing um, everything that he wants you to do, um, you know, you're, you're going out to dinner when he wants to go to dinner, you're going to the restaurant that he wants to go to, you're going to see the movie that he chooses, you're being submissive in every shape, form, or fashion, but when it comes time to follow his lead into the bedroom, that's when you gotta pump your brakes. Because once you give that control over to a man, your control is over. You have no more control. What you have to realize is that the, the physical attributes that you're, um, that you're equipped with are the same physical attributes that every other woman on the planet has. So you're not special. And when he meets you, he's going to make you feel special. He's going to make you feel like you're the only woman in the world. Because it's like single and divorced men. I talked about this in one of my blogs. I think it was in blog number two. I talked about single and, and divorced men. And, and they, um, they have a sampler platter of women. They have Golden Corral set up at their house. You know, you know Golden Corral, the, the the buffet restaurant where they you go in there, you pay about fifteen, twelve, fifteen dollars and you get you some diabetes on a plate and you know you can clog your arteries and stop your heart for the low, low price of fifteen dollars. Yeah. That's what they have set up at their house. And when you come into the picture, you are a new menu item. You are baby back ribs. They ain't never had baby back ribs on the menu ever. But now they got these new and improved baby back ribs. And you are those baby back ribs. Don't you feel special? You feel special. I feel special. I'm baby back ribs. I'm, I'm special. But once they get used to that and everybody like gets tired of having baby back ribs, then they introduce a new menu item to excite people again so they'll start coming back to the restaurant. So then they introduce... Um, hot wing night. They have Wednesday night. It's hot wing night. And, you know, they get all excited about the hot wings. And they forget about the, what about the rib? But I'm over here. I'm the ribs. I'm over here. I taste good. I'm tangy. I got honey barbecue sauce on me. I'm, I'm tangy. I'm good. Mm -mm. You just last week's ribs. And you don't realize it until after you have gotten to a point where you're used to being consumed. You're used to being the hot menu item until you're not anymore because he's completely and totally into you until he's not. I remember um, there was an episode of um, A Different World. It was one of my favorite shows when I was growing up. And then Whitley and Freddie and Kim and Dwayne, Wayne, all those people on there. And um, there was an episode when um, Freddie was just all into Shaza. And he was, yes, he was gorgeous with those dreads. He was just beautiful. And um, she was just, but she was just into him. And she just couldn't see anything. She couldn't see her education. She couldn't see anything but Shaza. And so they had like an intervention, like you have for somebody who was addicted to drugs, somebody who drinks too much. They had an intervention for her with her friends. And Whitley told her something that was very profound, especially for the late 80s. She said, he's the horse. You hold the carrot. If you make him work for it, you can ride him for the rest of your life. Now, men, please don't don't take offense to that because comparing you to a horse is an elevation in standards because most of the time, y'all act like rabbit pit bulls. You act like dogs in heat. I mean, you just act like you just ain't got no home train like your mama ain't taught you nothing about how to treat a lady because you're treating women like disposable diapers. And you just got to stop. But the only way they're going to stop, ladies, is if we stop them. We have to pump our brakes because we are actually driving the car. They're in the passenger seat until you put them in the driver's seat. Once you put them in the driver's seat, you are completely out of control because women, oh, our physical bodies are attached to our emotions. We cannot divorce them from each other. We, tr we try to, you know, women try to be so strong and career-minded and, you know, I don't need a man. I got my own money and blah, 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 blah. But it's like you're still a woman and your emotions are married to your body.
Let's give an example. My son. I found out I was pregnant when I was three weeks pregnant with my son. I was so excited that I was pregnant with my baby because I was trying to get pregnant. And so I was so excited. My mother was sick, so I wanted to have a baby before she passed away, but she ended up dying when I was two months pregnant with my son. Um, but she knew I was pregnant with him. She knew he was coming. So, you know, that was a blessing in its own way. Um, but my son and I bonded while I was carrying him, I carried him for 37 weeks and we bonded during that process of 37 weeks while he was, you know, in, in, in the gestation period while I was carrying him in utero. And so what women have to understand is how our biological and psychological makeup is. We are made to psychologically bond with a human being that is inside of us. So we take this stranger that we met at the club that bought us a few martinis and we allow this stranger to come into a space that is sacred, that is attached to our emotions inside. You can't just let anybody inside. That's why I know that you're supposed to save that for your husband, but I am a realist. I understand that women, you know, it is like, a one in 50, one in 50 times that a woman does not have sex with her husband until she marries him. I mean, it's just like, it's very rare these days. It's like the average time to have sex in a relationship is on third date, you know, after a third date, three weeks, you know, it's just not a long time. It's not a, a lot of time that you give yourself to know this person and to know what this person is capable of. So this is what happens. You meet this guy. You go to, you you hanging out with your friends. You meet this guy. He is absolutely wonderful. He, I mean, he has shoulders out to, he's tall, he's handsome. He's just, you know, charming. He's saying all the right things. You're giggling. He, 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 he. You done had a couple of drinks. And he's talking to you. He's saying all the right things. So, you you have conversation with this man. And y'all start on this, um, this roller coaster ride romance. I mean, it's just like a whirlwind romance. It's exciting. He's taking you places you've never been before. He's just showing you, he's treating you in a way that no man has ever treated you because, you know, I don't know, maybe the men you've been dating just country and they don't know how to treat a lady and he's, you know, taking you places and he's buying you things and he's just introducing you to his world. And you're just having this wonderful time. He's sending you text messages in the middle of the day. I just wanted you to know that I missed you. And um, he's calling you in the middle of the day. I just wanted to hear your voice. I didn't want anything. I know you're busy, but I just wanted to hear your voice. You're getting this kind of reinforcement. You're getting this kind of affirmation of his affection toward you constantly. It's just constant. It's just, it's wonderful. You just can't turn for him because he's just everywhere. He's sending you flowers. He's he's doing everything that he, he's doing everything right. He's taking you to dinner. He's whining you. He's dining you. And then you cross this barrier where he's not chasing you anymore because he's got you. Because you have given him the thing that makes you unique that he didn't have. You've given him you. And, you know, because we can't separate our bodies from our spirits and because we can't separate our bodies from our emotions, even if you don't intend to give that to him, when you become physically involved with a man, you become emotionally involved with a man. There's no way you can get around it. You're, you're not a cyborg. Men, I was talking about the analogy with my son and, and giving birth and, you know, the, the bonding process that took place over the 37 weeks while I was carrying my son. Men don't have that same bonding process with the child. They plant the seed and then they're out. They don't go back and nurture the seed. They don't do anything. They don't provide nutrients to the seed. You're the one who has this little parasite inside of you, sucking up all your nutrients and your energy, and you're bonding with this little person who is completely dependent upon you for everything. And then you give that same access to this man just because he's bought you dinner a few times, bought you some flowers, and made you feel like a lady. But you can't do that. You have to, and it's, it's not a manipulation tactic. You're ha you have to follow 
the guidelines that your mother gave you. Your mother told you, you know, you don't do that. You don't, you don't let boys touch you there. And women do that. We get, we give of ourselves too easily. And we think that, you know, I'm gangsta, you know, I'm a pimp. I can, I can handle mine. You know, I can, I can be with this man and I'm not going to worry about it until I see him again. But as soon as you get home, he's all you're thinking about because you have given him access to your body. You have given him your body and you can't, you can't just give that to anybody because anybody and everybody is not going to nurture you. No, everybody is not going to, every man does not know how valuable the love of a woman is. Some men, I'm not, I can't say all men don't know how to nurture the value of a woman because a lot of men really, really do. There are some really, really good guys out there, but because there are so many wolves in sheep's clothing, you have to be absolutely positively sure that this man is willing to commit to you the same way you are committing to him. You can't just give your body to somebody because he's bought you dinner a few times. You can't do that. You can't be in a dating relationship and just share your soul with somebody. You can't do that. You That's so disrespectful to yourself. You're disrespecting yourself. And if you don't respect yourself, what incentive are you giving him to respect you? Because all of a sudden, you will notice that this same man who had to call you in the middle of the day because he wanted to hear your voice, this same man who will send you a text message in the middle of the day to let you know he was thinking about you, he's not even answering your calls anymore. Usually, it before, it would be like two rings and he would answer the phone. Hey, babe, you know. Now it's four rings and you get the ignore button. And you know you get the ignore button because it usually takes about seven or eight rings for you to actually voluntarily go to voicemail, for it to automatically go to voicemail. But if you get the fourth ring and then you get the voicemail, you know he's pressed the ignore button on you because he's he's consuming hot wings. He's, he's had his fill of baby bag ribs. We got to be realistic with ourselves. You know, it's just like... Back in the day, people used to always talk about it, and they used to make jokes about it, and they say that, you know, men would um, sleep with the easy girls, and then he would marry the good girl. And if you are getting caught up in your feelings and getting caught up in emotion because of the fact that he made you feel so beautiful, when he's kissing you, he's touching your face, he's just making you feel like this beautiful woman, he just makes you feel alive, he just makes you feel wonderful. But that same analogy that I gave you about parental responsibility, women bond with their children when they're in utero because they're inside. But a man plants the seed in and he's no longer a part of the process. And that's why men can walk away from parental responsibility. I mean, you hear about it all the time. Men walk away from parental responsibility like that child never even happens. You see it on Jerry Springer when they're having those paternity tests and these men are saying, I'm not, that's not my baby, blah, blah, blah. And then it's just like when he finds out that it's not his baby, he's jumping around, he's so happy and skipping and carrying on. And then he's mad when he finds out that it is his child or he may be happy when he finds out that, is, that it is his child. But the thing about it is the fact that it's a possibility that it's his child. You know, that doesn't bond him to that child at all. The fact that it might be his child doesn't do anything for him. We got to be realistic with the way we deal with things, ladies. Just because you gave him that part of you doesn't mean that he gave you that part of him. It's like the part of him that he gives to you stays with you. But the part of you that he you gave to him, once he's not there anymore, he doesn't carry that with him. Not physically, not emotionally. So it's very important, it is incumbent upon women to make sure that a man is committed to you. 
You got to make sure that he is committed to you, not because of the fact that he feels obligated because you're pregnant or he feels obligated because you're putting this pressure on him because of the fact that y'all have slept together. You want a man who is with you because there is no other woman that he wants to be with. He only wants you. You don't want to a man to be with you out of obligation. You want a man to be with you out of desire. And in order for you to for him to have that desire, you got to give him something to desire. People don't desire things that they already have. You know, once the, once a man gets you to that point where that, where he has you and he knows that he has you wrapped around his finger, he's going to call you back when he gets ready because he knows that whenever he calls back and he says he's sorry, you're going to accept his apology. I'm not telling you what I heard, I'm telling you what I know. These are lessons that women learn way later than they ever dreamed that they would ever be learning lessons. Lessons that they learned in their 20s, they're relearning them in their 40s. They're relearning them in their 30s. They're relearning these lessons because a lot of times men are reintroducing themselves in their, and men in their late 30s and early 40s, they're reintroducing themselves to being single. And so they have reverted back to that college pimp <laughs> that as many women as he could have just as many women as he thought he could keep happy. So don't play yourself. I mean, if you feel like you're getting played, chances are you are getting played. How will I know if he's thinking of me if you gotta ask yourself that question and he ain't thinking about you? You gotta be honest with yourself. I mean, it hurts, it's painful, but it's the truth. I mean, the first step to recovery is admitting it. I mean, that's the first step to recovery from drug addiction or from any other thing you're trying to recover from in your life, admission. You have to admit it first. If you can admit that there is a problem, you can recover from that problem. The definition, ladies, of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. So if you're, you keep going from relationship to relationship, giving yourself to this man, giving yourself to that man, giving yourself to the next man, you're doing the same thing over and over again and you're expecting a different result. Try something different. Make him wait. Make him work for you. Make him earn you. You're worth being earned. You're worth waiting for. You're worth working for. Believe in yourself. Pump your brakes. He'll be there next week. If he's not there next week, then that's not your man. That's what you got to understand. If he doesn't ever call you again, it's going to feel a lot it's going to be a lot easier to swallow him never calling you again if you haven't given yourself to him than if you did. If if you meet a man and you tell him, "Look, I'm not I'm not going that fast. You're moving too fast for me. I need you to slow down." And he never calls you again, your investment has been minimal. You've spent some time, you bought, you've eaten a couple of dinners, you have talked on the phone, you've been late for work, sleepy, because you've been on the phone with him late at night, your investment has been minimal. But once you have given yourself to someone physically, and like I said, there's no way for a woman to divorce her body from her spirit. So once you've given yourself to a man physically, you've given yourself to him spiritually and emotionally, and you can't get that back. So him never calling you again before you give yourself to him is a lot easier to recover from than him never calling you again after you've given him given yourself to him because you can't get that back. You can't. So just go back to the old school. Remember what your mama told you. You know, just put that chastity belt on and make him wait. He can wait. If he wants you, he'll wait. If he really wants you, he'll wait. If he don't care, then he'll move on to the next woman, the easier target. But if that's what he wanted, then he didn't want a good woman anyway. So that's not what you want. So make him earn you. Make him learn you first and earn you. And that way you can learn him as well. And you'll know what he's capable of. And you'll be able to see whether or not he's the kind of man who is capable of walking away from you and never looking back the way some men walk away from parental responsibility. I hope you have a good week. I'll be back with you on Sunday. Um, we're going to talk about this subject and heart candy tomorrow night on my radio show. But I just want to give you some food for thought. Pump your brakes. Make him wait. <laughs>